Our families had known each other all of my life. I had seen Mary grow up. She was now becoming a young woman, and I looked at her with different eyes than I did when we were children. I could see that Mary would make a good and faithful wife. Fathers typically begin negotiations for their daughters when they are about 12 or 13 years old. When Mary's father announced to the community that he was ready to begin negotiating matches for his daughter, my father was quick to meet with him on my behalf, and I was pleased when they reached an agreement. On the day of our betrothal, my father and I arrived at Mary's home with a skin of wine and the mohar, which is a gift to Mary and her father. The money would support Mary if I were to die or break the betrothal promise. I began the ceremony by praying and blessing over the wine and pouring it into the glass. I pre presented the mahar to Mary and her father. And then I read aloud the contract that our fathers had agreed by stating my promise to Mary as her husband, as I signed it. Then I gave the glass of wine to Mary. If she accepted my proposal of marriage, she would drink from the glass. If not, she would refuse the wine. I was afraid that Mary would see how nervous I was when I held up the glass. I hoped with all my heart that she would accept. Mary looked at me, and as soon as I saw her eyes, I knew what she would choose. She reached for the glass, and she lifted it to her lips. She drank the wine, and then she handed it to me, and I drank The betrothal was sealed. We were now legally husband and wife. Mary covered her face with a veil to show she was no longer available. She would wear the veil until our wedding day and she lit a lamp and placed it in her window. She would keep it burning until the wedding and it would show me that she would not forget our betrothal covenant. After the betrothal ceremony, I returned to my father's home to prepare a place for Mary and me to live. I worked hard adding rooms to my father's home. Mary would continue to live with her father until our home was ready. I am a carpenter as is my father, as was his father before him. So I took special care in building the table where we would eat and the chairs where we would sit. As I worked the wood with my hands, I envisioned Mary and I having conversations at the table where we sat and the children would be at our feet. Mary kept busy during the betrothal time, preparing as well she sewed garments and made other preparations for our wedding day. As a betrothed couple, we were already legally bound as husband and wife, but our wedding day would be a special day. Mary would finally leave her father's home and walk through the streets of Galilee to the home I had prepared for us. She would wear the beautiful garments she had sewn and ride in a carriage on poles carried by her brothers. I look forward to that day with great anticipation. Though they, I, I had no idea when it would be. The groom's father always chose the wedding day. And only he knew the day or the hour. 
One afternoon I worked. My father came to talk to me. I turned my face to him as he placed a hand on my shoulder. I could see the concern in his eyes. With faltering voice, he told me that Mary had been found to be with child. I was devastated. My betrothed, my Mary, how could this be? My father told me that Mary claimed an angel of the Lord had visited her and told her that she would conceive by the power of the Most High. What was I supposed to think? What was I to do? Even if Mary, I believed her, the child was not mine. I felt I had no real choice. I knew the law. I would be expected to divorce her. I decided that I would divorce her quietly. I cared for Mary and did not want to publicly disgrace her or put her in danger. A girl in her position could potentially be stoned to death. Sleep was long in coming that night. My heart was heavy and I, I felt very unsettled. As I slept, an angel of the Lord appeared to me in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When I awoke, I ran to Mary to tell her about my visit with the angel. We worship together, we worship God together in awe as we considered what was happening. Our wedding day was every bit as exciting as I had imagined. My friends ran ahead of me, sounding the sofar and shouting that I was coming. Mary's unmarried friends carried candles, lighting my path to greet my bride. The light of the candle symbolized God's presence and reminds us of his Shekinah glory. A colorful procession wound through the streets behind us, singing as we went. As I reached Mary, her father turned his head so that I could steal my bride. Mary looked so beautiful on her wedding, in her wedding clothes. She climbed down from the carriage and, I, and joined me in the street. We walked through the streets together to my father's home, followed by all of our friends and family. Together, we feasted and celebrated for several days. I took Mary home as my wife, though we did not consummate our marriage until after she gave birth. When the child was born, I gave him the name Jesus, just as the angel had commanded. As I looked at this tiny boy in his mother's arms, I knew I would love him and raise him as my own. As I stared into his face, I tried to wrap my mind around the realization that this babe was the one our people had long waited for, the one who would save us from our sin, Emmanuel, God with us.